You're 23 years old, yes. you've got two degrees from two of the world's best universities. Neither of those degrees have anything to do with computer science, and yet you go and launch a computer company, essentially. I ended up at Cambridge to do my master's, um, and it was there that I encountered for the first time the, the Raspberry Pi. If you ordered one of these off the internet, there would be a, you know, a six-week waiting time with nothing else. No materials, no software, no plugs. That nakedness of this was, was part of the spirit of the Raspberry Pi. But, but going on from there, the opportunities for an ecosystem are huge, right? Mm -hmm. any, any efforts that I, that I had put into learning how to code had, had been stifled by the sort of difficulty of the available materials. Mm -hmm. And also a tendency, to be frank, in the tech community to, to use the exclusive jargon and buzzwords to, to keep uh, other people out. All we had was a, a Raspberry Pi some components, and I started writing this book with, with my seven-year-old cousin, actually. We started drawing some pictures and, and telling a story. You, you launched this computer before you actually put it on Kickstarter, which is an unusual path, because most people, when they, when they sell it for the first time, they're going to Kickstarter, um, or at least they go to Kickstarter to get the money to sell yeah. it. Okay. Um, why did you choose that path? Because you knew that you could produce it, you knew that you could produce the kit, you knew that there was a market for it. Why, why then go raise money well, on the internet? The, the, the initial, I mean, we didn't have enough money really to take this, this product to, the, to, to market without Kickstarter. So we right. didn't need Kickstarter to fund our, our first production run. What was wonderful about Kickstarter is that, you know, you're making the product you want for the people who want it, you know? Right. The, there's no intermediary. From a strategy perspective, obviously, you know, Kickstarter for, for a hardware company that combines sort of design and technology is perfect. But I also just have a massive sort of personal crush on Kickstarter. Were you surprised by the response, though? I mean, and what will it mean that you hit that number over a million and a half? Yeah, uh, we, we were very surprised. We knew there was this, this hunger, right. and we knew we'd made something pretty cool. Uh, we made 200 prototypes and we went around the country testing them in schools. You know, we, we, I'd walk into a classroom, I'd say, okay kids, who here has seen the, seen the inside of a computer before? A couple hands go up. All right. Who here thinks they know how computers work? You know, maybe two hands go up and some very creative explanations come out later. And then you say, who here thinks they could build a computer and make a game on it? You know, no hands go up. And, and it, paradoxically it was it was when we saw that, we knew we were onto something. And uh, the, the ball got rolling. You mentioned um, the OS. Tell me what this is showing us. Sure, yeah. So these blocks that you see on the screen are generating real code in Python and JavaScript. Um, and within minutes, you know, a kid who has perhaps never used a computer before, we've taken this to Sierra Leone, to Johannesburg, is able to make a game. We wanted to create a really fulfilling and meaningful software experience as well that would, again, just bring the focus back to creation and exploration rather than just, you know, regimented textbooks. Coding is about creativity, you know. It's, it's about bringing your ideas to life. I think Brits, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble here, um, should be kind of more, more proud of their computing heritage and start embracing it more as part of their culture. I mean, you know, the first computer programmer was English, right? Ada Lovelace. She was a woman as well. Amazing. Like, daughter of Lord Byron. You know, uh, the first computer was British, you know, the uh, difference engine invented by Charles Babbage. Uh, the first computer scientist was British, and he used the idea, Alan Turing, right? And he used the ideas that make computers work to crack Nazi codes and help win World War II. Um, the other element that, that Britain has, I think, over Silicon Valley is an emphasis on design and physical products. You know, you've got Rolls Royce, you know, you've got, you've got kind of a, that, that craftsmanship, you know. Go to Silicon Valley, you're, you've got the perfect network for consumer web and some of the smartest people in the world are doing it right. But here, you're having a real hardware renaissance and I think what's great, kind of linking back to schools, is hardware and physical computing is the best way to get kids excited about this stuff. Because the ideas that make computers work are very abstract, but when you make them real, lights turning on, robots roving across the floor, 3D printing shit, like that, that animates people. Ultimately, the, the message of Kano, and I think why we, 
why we did get some, some uptake it, it, is, is that of kind of exploration and play. Where we want to be five years from now, ten years from now, it, is taking the, the latest cutting edge tool, platform, that gives people creative ability that they didn't know they had, and, and making it accessible. You know, Yonasan says, empowering a new creative generation. And I think that is our mission.